So I came across a phrase recently that I liked. It says, uh, you can never learn enough linear algebra. I'm sure that's true for mathematical analysis or many other areas of mathematics, but it sure feels like it's true for linear algebra. There's just a lot of stuff to learn. Uh, I'm only like early into my second linear algebra book, uh, and it just feels like a bottomless pit of learning, which is wonderful. Should be, I should say it in a better way. Anyways, so I thought of titling this book and, I'm, and this video, and I'm going to make several videos like this one. Uh, you can never learn enough linear algebra, vector space basis, but instead I'm going to call it vector space basis in various uh, linear algebra books, or bases, or bases, just bases. So anyways, I'm going to run through some of these books. I have my little notes. I'm going to get rid of this prop. Um, and then really, the, the, the beginning for this idea comes from uh, Freebird in suspense. I really liked this diagram that they have uh, where um, really y y the most uh, vectors you can have in a vector space, you're going to have a generating set. You span the ve vector space, but there's a bunch of linear dependence business going on. Then you start reducing the number of vectors, and you get down to what constitutes a basis. Okay? Now, a basis is not unique. Uh, you can do a change of basis, of course, and that's why it's a section in any linear algebra book. Uh, but then, once you go below that, you're going to start getting linear independent sets, but you're no longer going to have a basis. So it's almost like if you look at this, uh, the same diagram, but drawn here, you'll see that if, if I drew like an arrow that said, you know, more vectors that way. Uh, so I'm going to start with this, uh, with page 43 of this book, and I'll run through a few books. So how does um, FIS define a basis? So a basis beta for a vector space V is a linearly independent subset of V that generates V. Uh, if beta is a basis for V, we may also say that the vectors of beta form a basis for V. Okay, there you go. That's it. So, uh, one thing that I really, uh, that I wanted to do is run through multiple books and show that. Uh, and I think, uh, another thing that I wanted to show was something that I think is, I find unique to FIS is uh, these two uh, theorems. The theorem, one, one is a theorem, the other one is a color corollary, where if you do it with diagrams, basically, if you have a set that you have your vector space, then a subset, and then a subset within that, S1 and S2, if you're at S1 and it's already linearly dependent, uh, you're already kind of in trouble. You don't, you don't have a, I mean, you have a basis, but you have more than what you need. Anything bigger than that is already going to be linearly dependent. You're already in the hole, basically. But in the, in the other case, if S2, the bigger subset, is already linearly independent, then you're sort of here. And anywhere you go to the left, any smaller sub, subset within S2 is also going to be linearly independent. So you're sort of going in two different directions. And so I really like what uh, FIS did with these two theorems. And they really helped me uh, work on a lot of the problems. Anyways, so I think we're done with uh, FIS for this uh, bit. Then I'm going to go into uh, the applied books. How, how do the, uh, the applied books deal with bases? So if I go into Anton, okay, Anton defines it a little differently. So he starts with the, the vectors in the basis. It's finite, obviously. And it's the, he says, uh, so S is called the basis if S spans V and S is linearly independent. That's, that's what Anton has to say about basis. Yeah. So then let's go to, uh, to Strang. And I'll come back to Anton for, for order basis. So in the case of string, I got a, I, I had a chance to go through uh, in some with some time over the beginning of this book, which I think is excellent, and I, really it's one of the books that I wanted to do originally, but I'm not sure I'm going to have enough time because there's other subjects that I want to cover. In the case of Anton, it's very interesting. I mean, in the case of string, 
If I said Anton, I meant Strang. Strang, Strang, Strang. Uh, in the case of Strang, it's also an, an applied book. Strang really, uh, I think, has some of the best explanations for uh, null set, null set, and uh, column space. And I know because I watched a video of him doing that, talking about it many years ago, and it shows in this book as well. Uh, in the case of Strang, he's really it's it's applied. He does AX equals B and AX equals zero almost from the beginning. And that's something that's very interesting in the way Strang approaches the book. So I'm kind of doing a segue in this video. I started talking about basis, but I want to talk a little bit about Strang because I'm going to make more videos like this one as I run through all the different topics that are the major topics of linear algebra. And one very interesting thing about Strang is the definition for a basis is on page 95. It's already pretty far in right? Sequence of vectors having two properties, linearly independent, not too many vectors, right? And spans. So it's exactly the same as Anton did it. But what's really interesting about Strang is he's here in page 95, and he's talking about a column space in page 71, null space in page 72, ax equals b all the way to page 20, and almost kind of like teases what a similarity transformation looks like in A is equal to L D L tra uh, transpose. It's not exactly like that because it would be L and then this L will be uh, the inverse. But anyways, very interesting uh, Strang's approach. Someday, maybe, I'll get to it. So then the next thing is order bases. And in the case of Anton, he talks about it in a very interesting way in page uh, 217. Let's see. So it's right here. It's almost like an in passing in here as a remark, but he says something interesting. So the order in which vectors are listed is critical for coordinate vectors. There you go. That's the reason why you need an order basis. So now let's go to the uh, theory books, or I, I would say the math major books. So that would be... Uh, Lang, um, Axler, and then Hoffman, Kunze or Kunz? I'm going to say Kunz. Uh, and I know there's a there's a fourth edition of this book that just came out. I may get it, but money does not grow on trees around here, so I'm not sure it's going to happen very quickly. So let's go to Lang, and Lang on page 50. Well, one one segue, one segue is, and I want to get it out of the way because this is going to be the first video of multiple videos that I make going through all these linear algebra books is uh, Lang and Axler use the concept of a linear mapping throughout the book. They just talk about linear mapping this, linear mapping that. And finally I looked it up and figured out what it was. So in the case of Lang and Axler, what they call a linear mapping, it's just a linear transformation. And in the case of FIS, the letter T is used all over the place. Sometimes U when there's two of them uh, and other letters, but really T. So linear mapping is a linear transformation. So now let's go to Lang and how he defines a uh, basis. He does it on page 11, so very early. Now, one thing that I'm noticing about Lang's uh, style, which I happen, happen to like, he's not wordy, but he's got text and it's tight. His language is very tight. And I kind of like that. So I don't know, maybe someday, Go through this book, not sure if I'll have the time. Uh, he doesn't have it as a definition, but he calls it, he says it here. The elements of V1 to Vn of V generate V, and in addition are linearly independent, then that set of vectors is called a basis. And uh, yeah, he also uses the term terminology, they, the elements constitute a f or form a basis of V. Very similar definition. So. Yeah, and he talks about, this is the part where he talks about linear mappings, and there you can see, if you look at this definition, that's just the definition of a linear transformation. There you go. And I think that's all I have to say for Lang. Then if we move to Axler, Axler, on page 53, also defines, you see, am I going in the wrong place? No. 53 is where he talks about linear mappings, linear maps. And yes, Axler 
makes heavy use of the terminology linear map. Also, he takes all the transformations and defines the vector space of all transformations, this curly L, that is also done in FIS, just as an aside. But the definition for a basis in Axler is on page 39, right here. A basis of, of V is a list of vectors in V that is linearly independent and spans V. Very brief and to the point. Then I think the next stop on the tour goes to Kunz or Kunzi Hoffman Kunz. I'm gonna say Hoffman so I don't screw it up anymore. And in this case, we go to page 41, and here it goes: vector space, a basis for V, linear independent set of vectors, span space V, and uh, V is finite dimensional if it has a finite basis. So he's already kind of going through like, hey, it could be infinite. Uh, and then, of course, he also defines the order basis. Finite sequence of vectors, which is linearly independent and spans V. Same thing, it's just ordered. All right, so next up on the tour is the applied books. The applied books are somewhat interesting in their own way. Uh, because I don't think any of these applied books is intended as a first linear algebra book. And so the way the, the material is covered, I think it's fair to say that all three that I'm going to talk about assume that you already know linear algebra. So, of course, there's already AX equals I. Yeah, there's a lot of content in these books early on that assume that you already know linear algebra. Um, and the way things are defined, it's just read it, know what it is, and then get to the applications, because all these books are all about the applications. But yeah, in the case of Agarwal, he's got a definition of a basis. And then, yeah, yeah, he's, he defines it right in here. I'm not going to read it, but it's kind of a different style that the applied, uh, the applied linear algebra books use, because they've got so much application content that... That's just the way they do it. Then in the case of Golub, if we go to page 49, that's another example, again, of how... I've got all these little marks to get rid of... Uh, of how an, an applied book will give it in a very succinct manner, because it's just like, hey, in case you didn't know, here it is, but you should know. And sure enough, they go into other content. And I had to kick the tripod. Then finally, in the case of Horn and Johnson. Excuse me a second. I kicked off the power. It is on page three, so very early on in the book. Right here. So again, very brief definitions. So there you have it. That is the concept of basis in various uh, linear algebra books.